and admit all. Okay, okay. Some people are coming in. We are just opening the waiting room and letting everyone in. I hope you can all see us. Uh, let's see. We were not supposed to necessarily have everybody admitted by video because that will be really crowded. So, so not everyone is on. If you are, um, if you are not a host, if you could put yourself not on video, that would be really helpful. And to do that, you click on the computer, on your computer screen and you go off to your left and hit stop video. Hi, Emily. <laughs> See Wendy and Emily. Okay. So we're waiting for Wendy Wilson to um, undo her. All right. Yeah. So I want to welcome everyone. I'm Diane Sears and I'm the co-founder of Go For The Greens. And anyone who is, if you can see yourself on the screen, that means that we can see you. So go ahead and stop your video. If you're not a presenter, that would be really helpful. Um, so I'm, I'm Diane Sears and I'd like to introduce my co-host, Cindy Chase. Cindy? Hi, Diane. Great job. You did a good job hosting. All right, thank you. <laughs> So we appreciate everyone being here. We, this is our first in a series of uh, about 10 webinars that we're going to be doing about how to do business with some of our partners. And um, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. So uh, if you are, if you, you have to, It's Wendy. Yes. Can you hear me? Hi, Wendy Wilson. Hey, yay, you can Hi, hear Wendy. me. Yes, Hi. if you could please take yourself off of video, that would be great. And Melinda McVie, if you could take yourself off of video, that would be great. All you have to do, ladies, is you see the little video camera, just click on it and it'll put a line right through. So you don't want us on video? Um, no, just the presenters. No. I apologize for that. Oh, it Wendy, it slows, the, it slows the connection down. The more videos we have running, it, the, the connection... Yeah. Lower. I didn't want to figure out how to do video, so. <laughs> okay. The little button, just click on it, and it'll put a line through it. I'm going. There you go. Perfecto. All right. All right, and I'm admitting some more people in. Okay. okay. Uh, while you do that, Diane, I'll talk for a second, Mike, because you, you, you're, I can't have you multitasking, because you're looking left and right, so um, I'll start this. So, um, Everybody, welcome to the uh, first webinar for Go For The Greens. And um, we just wanna thank everybody for taking the time to be a participant of uh, something historic. And as we all know, we're, um, we are just trying to help you, help yourselves you know, continue with commerce throughout the country and throughout the world. So we know that we have up to 75 people right now um, if we get up to 100, um, you know, they will not be allowed in. So thank you for signing up early for all of, the, all of you that signed up early. Um, because like I said, we can only allow up to 100. Uh, today's first webinar is with uh, UPS. So I'm going to just, just for those of you that didn't know, I am um, doing my own little commercial here <laughs> with the shield. <laughs> um, I, I did um, work for UPS for 33 years, but we would like to introduce um, our, our panel here. We've got three dynamic people from UPS. Uh, for those of you that have never been to go, to go for the Greens, you should come to Go for the Greens because you'll get to meet these fantastic ladies. Um, the other person is Layla Eagle. For those of you that can see her, Layla, can you just give a little wave? Hi. Uh, Lay Layla is the uh, sponsor of this event. Uh, she works for Collider and she's the person that will coach you on how to do all your capability statements, get into the UPS portal, and try to do business with UPS if you all um, deem that to be um, um, a corporation that you wanna do business with. So Diane, do you wanna say anything else? Cause I know that you're trying to manage and host this before we turn this over um, to the UPS team and, and start the actual webinar. I do. I want to talk about the ground rules today. So um, you all will be on mute. 
and you all should also not be on video. So if you can see yourself on the screen um, as you're looking, that means that you should untake yourself off of video and, uh, and you'll be on mute, but we will take questions via the chat room. So we are very much encouraging questions. Just type them into the chat off to the side. If you're not sure how to do that, um, then you can, uh, let's see, I, I guess you don't have to call somebody for help, but we'll, we definitely want to take questions. So this is pretty exciting. We, um, we will be hearing a little bit from Layla about how the matchmakers will work and that will come later in the program. We also want to tell you about some other programs that are going on right now that we want you to be aware of that can help you. And, um, and then the, the, uh, the star of the show really is, is talking to UPS about what they're doing and what they're looking for in suppliers. That's why we're all here. So, um, so Chris Oswald, would you like to start us off, please? Yes, yes, thank you. And, and first of all, um, Diane and Cindy, thank you so much for uh, asking UPS to be a part of your first webinar. Um, we were really honored that you would consider us to be part of the first one with you. And, and we absolutely understand when you're moving fast, like we're moving today and in this time, things may not be perfect, but it's more important that we stay connected and we know what's going on and we keep each other in each other's network. So um, I really appreciate this. And I know we're going to hear more from Layla about the virtual matchmaking coming up. That has been sort of a dream of mine for a while. So I'm really excited to be a part of this. So, um, and if I haven't met you before, it's really nice to, to talk to you in this environment. Again, my name is Chris Oswald. I'm the Director of Supplier Diversity at UPS. All right. Natasha, why don't you introduce yourself? We've all seen you at the conferences and um, it's great to see you on the screen. Yeah, sure. Um, hope, hopefully you can hear me okay. Yeah. Um, so, so, great, thanks. So I'm Latasha Griffin. I'm a, a Supplier Diversity Manager at UPS. Um, and I've probably met quite a bit of you at Go For The Greens over the past, I believe, two years that I've gone um, once as a supplier diversity professional and the year before as an actual buyer. So uh, we are really excited to be on the call today and hopefully we can give you some, uh, some good content to help you move your business forward. All right, great. And Melody Davidson, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, let's see, hold on, you're on mute right now. Um, can you un unmute yourself? Yeah, I did. Can you hear there me? You yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, yes, I'm Melody Davidson. I'm also a, a supplier diversity manager with UPS. Um, I have not had the opportunity to go to Go for the Green, so I'm really happy that we're getting to do this uh, via uh, virtual uh, uh, webcam. So this is great. So I appreciate it and, and looking forward to talking to everyone. All right, well, thank you. So with that, we'll kick into the questions. We've developed some questions that we've had based on our conversations with women business owners lately. And uh, I'll just pull them out and then you all can decide at UPS who is gonna answer which question. But um, our first question is what are you looking, what's, your, what's UPS looking for right now from suppliers? That's, uh, I'll, I'm gonna take that one and then I'm gonna turn that over in a bit to, uh, to Melody and Latasha. And, um, so we can get into some details. When we, when we talked about getting together here the first time, um, we wanted to be able to share some detail with you specifically about what we're looking for uh, in the hopes that that will prompt you to want to sign up for matchmaking with us. So uh, when we get into it, I am going to ask uh, in a few minutes here, um, I think Latasha will probably go into the chat section and she's just going to put up a simple list. So at least you know the, the areas, right, that we're looking for new suppliers in right now. Um, so you can see that, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Melody and Latasha to get into a little bit of detail on some of those, so that you get a little more, a little more flavor than just a simple list. But you know, depending on how much time we have, if we can't get into everything, I wanted to make sure at least you saw sort of the the broad list of what we're looking for. Um, what I'll tell you right now is, in this really um, challenging time, um, you know, the good news is is that UPS is is working. Right? We are, as an essential business, trying to keep the transportation infrastructure going. Um, we're, we're still going. So we need all the sa same things we always do. Um, certainly our business has been impacted because of uh, how your businesses have been impacted. That, that absolutely impacts us. But in other respects, um, we are super busy. Um, we have been very involved, as you, you may have seen, uh, in our work 
just to try to help um, our world de deal with this pandemic. Um, you know, just by delivering, we're trying to help each other maintain that social distancing. Uh, we have been very active, for example, in Project Airbridge um, with the U.S. to bring in uh, personal protective equipment from around the world and then bring it into our Louisville hub, break it down and get it distributed out to hospitals and various medical facilities um, working through FEMA. Um, we're setting up beds and temporary hospitals and UPS people all, all over the place trying to make that happen. And I have to say, um, although myself and my team and many of us in staff positions are safely ensconced in our homes, uh, I am so impressed and appreciative of the UPSers who are in those frontline operations, sorting packages and running the airline and out delivering to all of our homes. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't take a minute to, to thank them and recognize the, uh, the work that they're doing. Uh, and it does allow us to be uh, fully operational and, and to keep buying and need what we need. Um, I think to start with, before I turn it over to, to Melody and Latasha, I think that the key thing to talk about here is uh, a little bit, and I'm going to ask Melody to go into this, is personal uh, protective equipment. That is something that our need for that, for masks and gloves and uh, sanitizer and all sorts of um, equipment that has become so much more relevant and in demand today has really gone through the roof for so many organizations, and UPS is one of those. So, uh, you know, I'm happy to say that we've engaged multiple new suppliers uh, new diverse suppliers um, into our supply chain to buy, I think it was about $6 million worth last week. We're looking for another $5 million worth from new diverse suppliers uh, this week just in personal protective equipment. So uh, there's certainly some new needs as a result of the coronavirus and, and what we're dealing with, but our regular needs uh, have continued as well because we, we're still operating and still getting things done. So, uh, Diana, if it's okay with you, um, and I want to take a break in case you wanted to take this a different direction, but I thought it would be great for Latasha to sort of post a list of some commodities and for each of Latasha and Melody to highlight um, a few in particular um, that they maybe have a little extra detail on. And then with that list out there at the end, if folks want to ask us questions about any of the other ones, we're certainly available. I think that's that a work? great plan. That is a great plan. So, Latasha, okay. if you can post the list. Okay, we've got the list posted. And, um, and I also see that there are some questions starting to come in. So uh, Rachel Slowey, if you guys can hold tight, we're going to ask your questions later, uh, as we go along. So Melody, why don't you tell us what's going on? Well, so okay, the, the so... PPE is actually mine. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah, PPE is yeah. actually mine. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll go ahead and take that one. Got it. Um, so for, for, for those of you on the call who may not be familiar with the term PPE, it's um, personal protective equipment. Um, so as you can imagine, we've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of folks out in operations who need these materials so they can keep moving, you know, the goods and, and, and things that folks need to, to survive, right? Just everyday survival in all of our hospitals and governments that are needing these supplies. So um, this one has kind of risen to the top for us, and, and we've pulled a bunch of resources together to try to find um, suppliers that have that have these things. And so uh, to give a little bit of detail of the exact type of items that we're looking for, um, we are purchasing um, masks, um, face masks, so level one, two, three, um, also the N95 masks, if they're available. Um, we're also purchasing hand sanitizer gel. Um, it would need to be 60% alcohol or greater, um, and preferably the kind of gallons that have a pump on them is, is what we're looking for, so that we can keep refilling um, containers uh, in our operations. We're also looking for disinfectant wipes, um, uh, latex or nitrile uh, gloves. We're also looking for those. Um, also, toilet tissue and, and any facial tissue and um, like um, surface wipes, so like cotton surface wipes, we're looking for those as well. Antibacterial hand soap, um, paper towels, plastic spray bottles, uh, empty spray bottles. So, you know, we have quite of an exhaustive list of items that we're, we're sourcing. Uh, currently for, for PPE. So if anyone on the call has any of those, uh, we certainly would want to hear from you. Okay. Um, and Chris, I think you might be speaking, but we can't hear you. Yeah, you're good. I was going to say, let's, let's, let's cover a couple non-PPE things too as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Um, so that was PPE. Also, um, someone in the in the chat box asked about contingent workforce. So um, we are keeping our um, our our contingent workforce suppliers hopping. Nothing has changed on that on that uh, front. We're still you know using our staffing companies to the full extent that they that we needed them to uh, previously. But we are looking for um, staffing suppliers who can provide um, drivers. Right, so CDL drivers, um, and that's uh, been a source of uh, need for ours for a while. So, if anyone on the call has, you know, access to CDL drivers, we want to hear from you as well. Um, we do have some insurance requirements, um, you know, kind of your standard workers' comp and errors and emission insurance, that sort of thing, um, and driver eligibility requirements. I'm happy to talk about those one on one. Um, but that's definitely an area of concern for ours that we'd like to, to hear from um, any suppliers who have those. Uh, also on the security front, um, we're always looking for companies that can provide security guards, um, whether they're armed or unarmed or um, off-duty police officers is always great as well. Um, and then specifically for our airline, um, and, and this is this is going to probably be good for anyone who wants to work with any airport systems or other airline um, companies. Um, there's a desire for suppliers that have the, um, it's called the Security Act certification, which is a certification provided by Homeland Security um, for anyone who wants to provide security guards that can do like screening of items through um, security systems and things like that. So that would give you kind of a leg up on any other security um, security suppliers if you have that certification and you're wanting to work with airlines. Okay. All right, Melanie, maybe you could highlight one or two and then, then I'm sure we'll have, we're already seeing some questions come in. So I'm sure we'll have some questions on some specific topics. Okay, um, I cover most of the direct and uh, transportation commodities. So some of the things we're looking for are general contractors. Um, and in that space, we're looking for people that have experience in electrical and plumbing, HVAC, and then also uh, precast buildings and the tilt-up buildings as well. Uh, most of our facilities that we do build are kind of our hubs, like warehouse type facilities and some office space. Um, so that's one of the areas. Also automotive parts, um, and we buy uh, for our package cars and also for our tractors and our trailers, um, our shifters, and we have vans, uh, we have ground equipment, support uh, equipment, uh, dollies, those types of uh, parts that we're looking for. And it can be uh, original equipment or aftermarket uh, products. Uh, also, we're looking, always looking, uh, and this is continuous, we're looking for asset-based transportation providers. And what I mean by that is you have to own your own assets. So we are not looking for brokers. We're looking for uh, transportation providers that have their own tractors and their own trailers. And we do have some um, insurance requirements and other requirements that you have to have in order to uh, qualify to be a transportation provider. Uh, during peak season, we always are looking for uh, to lease trailers. Um, we utilize uh, other trailers besides UPS trailers during our peak season. Uh, we are just only looking to lease the trailers, not, the, uh, not a tractor. So um, if anybody has uh, leasing of 53-foot uh, trailer equipment, we are looking for that. Other, some of the other stuff that were on the list, we won't go into detail, are uh, aircraft parts. Uh, we also buy a lot of fuel. So we're looking for ground diesel fuel as well as um, jet fuel. So that's some of the commodities that we're specifically I'm looking for. Great, very helpful. Is there anything else you wanted to add, you all, or uh, before we move to our next question? No, I, th I think we'll we'll we'll, be, we'll go back and circle through some of these questions. And if folks want to go go deeper or have some questions on on other topics, we can come back to it. That sounds good. So tell us what information you need from potential suppliers to help you make your decisions on whether to meet with them as, uh, as matchmakers or whether to in inquire for more information. What, what kinds of information do you need from the potential suppliers? All right, well, 
You know, it, it, the detail obviously is going to going to vary based on commodity, and and we, you know we'll try to share some of that with you. But um, I think right now, if if you think you fall in any of those 14 areas that we've highlighted, then we de we definitely want to talk to you. And I think that's you know labels matchmaking is a great way to do it. If not, we'll we'll find another way to connect. I'm seeing some great notes come in here on chat with people who think they, they've got some some things that we need, which is fantastic. Um, but when we do connect, I think what's really important. Um, I mean, yes, we need you know, some sort of capability statement. We need to have a conversation about what you could do for us. But I think one of the things that sometimes people don't think about is, you know, think about in our position in UPS, you know, think about what is our total cost of ownership of, you know, whatever that product is that you may be able to provide for us. Because typically, you know, the, the acquisition cost of a piece of software, for example, or a piece of hardware that we may be purchasing, um, is typically less than half of our total cost for owning and using that. We've got training costs and maintenance costs and setup costs and, and all sorts of um, additional costs that go around using the products and the services that we buy. And as a supplier, if somebody's thinking about that and you may have some expertise around how not only can we manage the price that we pay you, but we can reduce our overall ownership cost Maybe there's a training element, or maybe there's a, uh, a warehousing element, or some other operational element that you can add into your offer that makes you stand out from someone else that um, is not only helpful, but if we could translate that into cost of ownership and help the people you're talking to realize that offering training is not an extra, offering training is value that can be quantified and should be considered in your bid. So I always like to make sure people are thinking about the full cost of ownership, because ultimately the price we pay is, is only a fraction of what it costs UPS to bring in and use the services and the products that we buy. So think about that. Um, and I'm also going to say think about sustainability. Um, obviously, we take this seriously at UPS, but I think we're going to see that all companies are going to take this more and more seriously going forward. It is very clearly the writing is on the wall and in the memos and all over the place that um, more and more investors and more and more business decision makers are thinking about sustainability in their products. And some of the most successful suppliers that we get really excited about when we meet with them are ones that say, yes, I can provide X that you need, but I can also do something with that to address a sustainability need. Maybe I can recycle the unused porches or buy it back or somehow you know, integrate a sustainability solution into how you use that, uh, and that gives folks a leg up. Um, and most of all, it's about collaboration, about figuring out how we can use your products and services in a way that, that uh, provides that value add um, to UPS. So, you know, the details are going to vary on the individual commodity, but I think um, thinking holistically about the value you bring to UPS and when you sign up for matchmaking or talk to us and, and you're talking to us one-on-one, -on -one, make sure that's part of the story. Chris, we're so happy to hear you mention sustainability because Go for the Greens, that's one of our original pillars of why we were founded is to help women business owners get more okay. into that whole sustainability piece. And we're hearing from more and more corporations that that's something really important they're looking for. So thank you for, uh, for saying that, that's important. Um, and also the, the piece about um, uh, the, the total cost of ownership. That's something I think a lot of people don't think about. So very helpful. Um, we are seeing some more questions on the side and we will get to those. Uh, I wanted to move on to um, ask, oh, the, the other thing I wanted to do is make sure that we know everybody on the call knows that the reason we're doing the matchmakers is because we know that you have so many people trying to get to you as the supplier diversity people at UPS that we want to help you kind of streamline that process. So you all, you know, rather than going to UPS directly, we think it's really helpful if you log in through, uh, through our matchmaker portal. And if you haven't done that yet, because we didn't give you the information or for whatever reason, um, that will be included later in this, in this webinar from Layla Eagle. But, um, but we, we want to make sure that, uh, that everybody is in that portal because we will be doing these, these uh, matchmakers with many different corporations and we want to make sure that everyone's in there and, and not have to handle each one separately. That's a lot of work for everyone. So 
Uh, our next question is about um, how your communication channels have, have changed with your current and potential suppliers because of the pandemic. You know, we're seeing that evidence right now instead of sitting at, uh, uh, at a Go for the Greens conference or at WeBank or at Women Presidents Organization or, or NMSDC, we're, we're here on a webinar. So tell us how the communication channels have changed for you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's a great question. And uh, by the way, welcome to my guest room. So I guess that's the first, the first thing to <laughs> for us. Is, um, you know, every, every conference from uh, from really beginning of March now through June um, has been canceled or postponed or made virtual. Um, and so much of supplier diversity in the past has been, you know, get up and go. We're, we're on the road, meeting with folks, building those relationships. So finding new ways to do that. Uh, is really important, and that's 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 I mean why I'm so excited about what we're doing here, uh, because it is it is new for us to connect a webinar to matchmaking and try to try to find try to get the value of that experience we might have if we were sitting together at Go for the Greens or another event, and and do it virtually. So um, that's you know probably one of the biggest pieces. I mean we're we're obviously all uh, ensconced at home, and we're trying to figure out how do we talk to our suppliers and and help them through this pandemic. So. Um, you know, we are, for example, um, creating a, a series of webinar content about helping businesses survive and endure through this pandemic. So if we can provide some expertise or some information that, for example, can help a business who is, who is very reliant on a storefront presence, but a storefront presence doesn't work anymore. And if we can help a business learn how to transition over to an e-commerce model, then uh, we're pulling in, for example, our consultant that helps us with our e-commerce uh, approach, and we're going to put them on a webinar and invite um, small businesses to come join us and learn about how they could do that. So, so a series of webinars, I think they're going to start Thursdays at 1 o'clock, uh, we're going to put together as well to try to help businesses endure through this. And, uh, and then just let you know we're available. You know, we may be off-site, but we're on email, we're checking voicemail, um, and uh, and we're still here, and and, and I'm happy to say, and, and and I wish more corporations could say this. I'm happy to say, um, still fully staffed. So the whole supplier diversity team, the whole procurement team, is still fully engaged in getting work done. That's good. Um, any any uh, other information that you wanted to provide, Melody, Natasha? Okay. No, Chris covered it pretty well. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> It's um, always how, good to say that your boss covered it well. <laughs> good deal. Uh, how do you become a tier two supplier under the current conditions? Um, any, any recommendations on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to let Melody and, and Latasha weigh in on that because they work with a couple of our big primes on, on the tier two piece. I'm not sure that that's been impacted as much with the coronavirus, but I'm going to let uh, Melody and Latasha tackle that one. Okay. Yeah, um, so for instance, uh, depending on what most, a lot of corporations do, UPS um, last year and kind of the year before in 2018, we started uh, changing how we uh, hire facilities management type uh, suppliers. And we've gone with CBRE as a single source. Um, but in saying that, um, CBRE does not do all of the work themselves. They do hire uh, contractors like yourself to do the work on behalf of all of their customers like UPS. So we have been working uh, diligently with CBRE to ensure that um, they're utilizing small and diverse suppliers. Uh, we've shared our list of the current suppliers that we were using before they took over our business uh, to see if they could continue to use those same suppliers. And then we are still working with them on a longer term plan of how to build uh, their supplier diversity program. Even though they already have one, we want to help them uh, enhance that program and make sure that they are using uh, small and diverse suppliers in, in line with, this, with what UPS does. So uh, in that field, you know, we are not hiring people in those types of directly. Uh, but we do direct them to CBRE, and they are happy to talk to people that are in those in those that area. Great. Well, yeah, another example for us is um, we use a company called Tapfin for our our managed service provider, and the 
uh, staffing, contingent staffing space. So whereas we don't uh, necessarily directly contract with um, staffing companies anymore, um, you know, we make sure that TAPFIN, you know, that they have uh, a full understanding of our goals and our values, right, so that they know that as they're going out to look for staffing companies to place in our, um, in our projects, that they know that, you know, we expect full transparency of, of their level of commitment to supplier diversity, right? Because for us, it's really about impact. It's not so, so much for us about, you know, having high tier two spend numbers, right? It's really, how do we look at our primes um, and, and really drive that same impact with them that, that reflects our values internally with our uh, direct suppliers, right? Um, you know, and, and even beyond, you know, our suppliers, I think um, really the best way to try to become a tier two to any large company like UPS is to really work your internal network, right? And, and I think um, a, lot of, a lot of companies may miss this mark where, you know, if, if you have a network like Go For The Greens or WeBank or WPL, right, you should really be trying to work with those other Weebies to um, grow your capacity and to partner up on big contracts, right, to, to grow your um, share of wallet with a company like um, a UPS, right? Um, and, and I think that is probably the best way to become a tier two supplier. Um, and then even further than that, I feel like the suppliers that make the biggest impact that I see be successful in growing their, work, their network um, are the ones who are connectors. Um, and I can think of probably a couple of folks right offhand, like Patty Wynn Stanley, right? Um, Patty's always trying to tell us about another supplier that she doesn't do, you know, that particular type of industry. But if she knows we have a need, she'll come to us and say, hey, I, I hear you're looking for X. Have you met this supplier over here, this other Weeby, right? So it's really important, I think, to maintain your relationships with suppliers or, or big companies that maybe you can't even provide anything for them. Um, but being that, that bridge between them and another Weeby um, keeps you at top of mind, right? So when those opportunities do come up, you can think, oh, I remember Patty told me she did this. Let me reach out to her, right? So just being a great connector and being a bridge to other um, Weebies in your network is a great way to become um, a tier two supplier. That's great. We can see Patty's on the call. She's on our board of directors. So Patty, thank you. Uh, thanks for, for that. We can see you in the chat room too. So very good. <laughs> All right. So um, the other, the next question is, what do we need to know about doing business with your organization today? So what is different about doing business with you right now that maybe wasn't evident in January, let's say? Yeah. yeah well, I, I think the big thing due to this pandemic, um, you know, we're looking for different things. We're looking for some more things that we talked about at the top of the, at the top of the hour. Um, and I think in some of those other areas that maybe are not strategic areas for us, um, you know, that we tend to buy things more transactionally, maybe more price-based, just, you know, you, we need them, but they're not core to our business. Um, you know, while we're so focused on this pandemic, those things are still moving forward, but they'll probably slow down, to be honest, just because we have a, a team of folks, re you know, focusing on uh, some other hot items right now. So, um, you know, I think that's that's just sort of the reality in some non-strategic areas that that uh, it may take us a little longer to, to execute that RFP, or it may may we may push off rebidding that immediately uh, for a few weeks, uh, just because we've got to focus on some more uh, hot topics that are hitting us right now. But um, you know, I, I feel so fortunate um, to work at an organization like UPS that uh, is is in a position to sustain uh, through a, through an event like this and that is in a position to help others sustain an event like this. So, um, you know, for the most part, we're still here and uh, ready to do business. Thank you. It's great what you're mm -hmm. doing. Um, I'd like to take some questions now from the, the um, audience. There are, uh, there, were six, there are 60 people online. So let's see, they want to know if you're going to be, we will be providing the Thursday meeting details from you guys. If you don't mind, we'll share that with our audience. Uh, yep. Good. Uh, we wanted to know if there is a, a need for export crating and packing services. Just say yes or no, maybe. 
Latasha? Not, not at this time, not at this time, but feel free to, to reach out to me in case that need does arrive. All right, and how about uh, waste disposal or hard drive shedding, shredding? That's Melody, so. Yeah. Waste. Uh, no, I, I mean, I don't know, Latasha, do we even have anything that does uh, anything with our hardware and stuff? We, we do. We, 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 we do. We, we uh, contract with an organization that does that for us. It's not on our list of something that's upcoming right now, but, you know, in any of these areas, it's stuff we have to buy. And, and part of what we need to do is continually build, you know, a list of qualified suppliers who, when the time is right, we, we know who you are, you've met the stakeholders, we're ready to go. So, um, yes, that's actually something that we procure. It's not something that, that, that I'm aware that's up for bid anytime soon, but we should definitely know about you so that when that time comes, we're ready. Someone asked, what about face visors? Do you need face visors? At this time, we're not using face visors or procuring them, but that doesn't mean that that's not something that we may switch to at some point. Just we don't know how this thing is going to fall out, right? So I'd love to have any of those contacts for anyone who has those. Yeah, then this is Cindy. There was another question about the N95s. Um, and I just yes. know from working with some of the pilots, um, that might be something. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the pilots are, I know they're looking for that too. So mm -hmm. that's a great question, so. Yeah. All right. And then um, someone did ask, what does CBRE stand for? I, was, that, was that CB Richard Ellis? Is that, what does yes. CBRE stand for? And which yeah. end Melody talked about that. that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. that is yeah, what it stands for. Um, yeah. And they, it's all facilities management. So anything that has to do with the building, uh, building maintenance, uh, supplies for the building, those types of things are covered in that area. Would lighting, uh, lighting be covered in that? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. In okay. some cases, it depends if it's a new building or not. Okay. New construction, it might, or if they're, but that kind of can depend. Yeah. 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 CBRE, think of CBRE as repair and cleaning. Yeah. Right? So repair and cleaning is what you can think of for CBRE for us, for our arrangement with them. But when it comes to designing or installing or, you know, modernizing uh, a part of our facility, then we would contract with that directly. Okay. And then we did, uh, somebody was asking, what did you, what does cafeteria services mean on your list? We have our right, cafeteria so for the, um, facility. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I was actually the buyer for that commodity prior to joining the supplier diversity team. So um, for any, any uh, facilities that we do have that are large enough to have a cafeteria inside the facility, um, we generally will have a cafeteria services provider manage it. Um, and so, you know, this would be a company that would be able to manage, you know, multiple facilities across the country um, in different geographic areas. Um, and that would be from anything from the, the food that's provided to the uh, equipment that's maintained in a cafeteria and the customer service people that are in the cafeteria, that sort of thing. And, and if you don't mind, um, mm -hmm. um, I don't mean to interject, but I obviously I have to. When you said the country, that could also mean like Canada and countries, correct? Mm -hmm. It could be. Uh, right now, the, the sourcing opportunity that's out there is for our U.S. operations, but we're, you know, not to say that we wouldn't look at other parts of the world um, as well. Mm -hmm. All right. This has been so helpful, you all. Thank you. Um, I want to give Layla a little bit of time to talk about the matchmakers and how they might work because some questions might come up for you all too. Layla, can you put yourself back on the video screen? There she is. Welcome, Layla Eagle. Thank you. Thank you, UPS ladies. That was amazing. I've learned so much. Thank you. For all the right. Time. I took a bunch of notes. <laughs> yeah, I took lots of notes. Um, well, we I, are recording this though, right? We are. So I hope everyone's well and, and healthy and um, I miss all of you. I hope to see you soon. Um, I haven't been so aware of what I look like in video in so long. So I've been taking care of combing my hair. Did that today for the first time in a couple of weeks. 
as you can see, I'm on an island. Uh, so, but I'm taking the time out to do this because I care about you. Uh, so what we've done, so Cindy and Diane called me a couple weeks ago and we didn't know where we were. And they were really concerned about what everyone was feeling and your, your businesses and kind of stay connected and figuring out how we can help. So we kind of rushed and put some things together for you. Um, so matchmakers, what we've done is we put together a, um, a platform where you're going to put in your profile, just like you've done before. It's a little upgraded version though. And um, we expect you to upload your one page capability statement so that we can also grab that and send it to other folks that are asking for specific things. Um, that platform will be uh, live. You'll be able to chat through it. You'll be able to do, ask for a video call through it right on the platform. Uh, so we ask you that your profile is up to date and that you come back and you update it. We don't want anything that we have to go do some betting on if you can just keep that updated. Um, so next thing is that the other thing that we're working on, aside from the matchmakers, is that, well, let me go back. Once you have your profile set up, uh, we'll have several corporations in there looking at it. Uh, they can request to meet with you. They can request more information, or you can apply for the matchmaker event where your profile will be looked at, and we can um, approve a meeting or kind of give you some feedback on what you need to do to, do, to get a meeting. Uh, the next thing we're doing to make sure that you're all stay connected and not only you're talking about business but doing business is we've created a virtual trade show. So you have the opportunity, once you set up your profile, to set up a booth in a marketplace that's virtual. Um, we're going to open it up to three different offerings per WBE. So you can set up three tables and those tables each can have a product that you're offering. Um, I encourage you to be very focused and very uh, specific per table, even with pricing, so someone can actually just uh, click on that offering, call you, and order it uh, if, if need be. So think about being in a trade show, what things you want to bring, what things you have want to sell immediately, and we're going to give you the opportunity to have three tables. So that's uh, uh, after you've done your profile, you get a link to be able to um, create some trade tables. And, um, and then the last thing that we want to talk about is your matchmaker. So we're going to do the matchmaker right through the platform. Uh, we have Zoom integrated into the platform. So once you've, uh, and when you go in and check your profile, if you've used the system before, you know you get an agenda. Um, you can set yourself available for certain times. Um, we'll set up the, the matchmaker for the day, and then you can decide what's the last of that day you're available during the, that um, time and we'll match you according to your availability. Um, and you'll enter a room just like this one. Once you click onto your, your meeting, say it's 2.30, you click on 2.30, the other person will click on that link and you will be a, a Zoom call just like this within the platform. Great. And just remember, we're, um, we're gonna do back to back. So once your meeting is over, you will be shut off and that person will have another video call that will pop. So be mindful of the time because we, we're, we need to, to stay on time for the matchmaker. Um, I think that's, um, that's it. Now, once you've set up your profile, we're going to have a series of events there. You can apply your profile to the different events. So you do your profile once and just click on or sign up for the events that you want to attend. I can actually put that one o'clock Thursday um, event that UPS will be having, I can put that there also so you, we can track uh, from your business profiles who's attending that if you like. Um, that's it, it's a lot. Uh, we are working today and tomorrow on a couple of explainer videos so that when you're in the system you can watch it, we'll keep it under a minute uh, just to make sure that you get through uh, all the steps correctly, uh, make it a better experience for you, uh, but you can always call me or email me or even chat with me through the platform or someone on my team. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Any questions that I should be answering? 
Um, I do have a question, Layla. How, when do you think the matchmakers will start? Because I know that we've really thrown this at you and we thank you so much for being our partner and donating this to us or some of this service to us. So when will this start with UPS? So I think that uh, we need to kind of talk with UPS on their availability, mm -hmm. but we are working on, on doing that by next week, early next week. I know Latasha sent me a list we sent that list out. We have a, one of my, someone on my team has been reaching out and looking for those folks. Once we get uh, your login credentials to you tomorrow and you go in there and you fill out your profiles, then we also have a better understanding um, on how fast we can start the matchmaker. It's really all about getting the right people um, right, to UPS right. according to their needs. But we're ready. Um, I would say, we can schedule it for next week, early next week, Wednesday. Uh, maybe we can, I don't know what we have scheduled for next Wednesday, but maybe we can take this time to do it. Yes, we do have another session next Wednesday. So that would be a really good time to, uh, to talk about the matchmakers. And you all, we will be sending out details to everyone. Uh, we're looking at our partners at UPS for doing, and we want to do some kind of an encore presentation. So that might come right before your matchmakers, or it might come, might come right after. Um, but we, uh, we've been talking about that. And we just appreciate everyone for being so flexible, because this is something brand new for us. And we've been kind of throwing it together. And, and, um, and it's, and we're excited how it's all working out. So the, uh, the virtual trade show, we're getting a uh, we want to know how to the link for creating the profile and the virtual trade show. Will you be providing that soon? Layla? So, uh, once I get the list of the folks that attended today, mm -hmm. once I get into that list somehow, then we'll send everyone a login credential. Hopefully that'll be done by tomorrow midday. Uh, and then you go in and you create your profile. And from there you can go to the marketplace and create your three tables. Okay, great. So that'll be available immediately. And let me just be clear, I, we can do, as, as long as we have the folks that UPS needs, we can do the matchmaker as early as Tuesday next week. Uh, if, if, yeah, all, so you're, if everyone so you're goes not in there, around. We're in, really yeah. fast. Uh, we just want to make sure that we, we make uh, meetings with intent and purpose. And there's a reason for these matches. So as long as we have the right people, and it looks like it because I've been reading the comments and there's folks in there that are ready to go. So yes. get your login credential, get in there, set up your profile, set up your, your virtual booth and get going. Uh, if we have enough to cover, I don't know what you're thinking, Chris or Latasha or Melody, if you're thinking about four or five hours, we have enough people to cover that. We can do it next week. Okay. All yeah, right. We're excited to work with Layla uh, to put this together and um, I think this will be a fabulous opportunity for us to connect, but I just want to say that we'll still be at Go for the Greens in September and looking forward to meeting all of you guys in, in, in you know, in person and see your smiling faces. Um, Cause that's, you know, we really enjoy that part of, of our job is getting to, to meet and learn about you guys and your businesses and, and your family. So um, we'll still be there and, and thanks so much to Go for the Greens for putting this on and bringing us uh, to be your, your test subjects for the webinar <laughs> for, for the challenge. So yeah. <laughs> thanks again, challenge. you guys. There was, um, thank you, Tasha. There's one more thing that I wanted to say, and that is that um, Nancy Allen at Webeck, Florida, so that's the Women's, Bus Women's Business Enterprise Council of Florida, uh, has offered at Go for the Greens in person uh, and also in uh, another set of webinars to help people with their capability statements. So if you have one and it's, you think it's okay, um, she is putting together a program that will help you make it the best it can be so it's more effective. And, um, and e even, uh, you know, we can evaluate it for you, that kind of thing. So we're working as Go for the Greens in partnership with Webeck Florida. Doesn't matter if you're from Florida or not, you know, if you are part of WeBank or not, it just matters that you are part of the Go for the Greens community. So I think that's really cool uh, that they're offering that to us in partnership. So, um, so Nancy could not be with us today, but she will join us for next week's meeting. And we, um, with that, we'd like to start wrapping it up. And Cindy, I'm going to hand it over to you and see if you have any other uh, announcements. Maybe talk about the mentorship program. Yeah, thank you. 
So thank you again, uh, Team UPS. Fabulous Woo. job by all of you ladies. Um, so proud to be a, a Rad, uh, Radford, because uh, so, I went to Radford. I'm so proud <laughs> to be a UPS alumni. Um, you all did a great job. And um, just looking at all the people and all the questions, fabulous job. Um, this was a, a great beginning to hopefully a Uh -oh. Oh. <laughs> well, that's how come I can't do that in person when she's on stage? <laughs> well, anyway, so we do want to thank everybody for being here. Um, we are doing something similar with our mentorship program. So that starts tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern time. If anyone on this call knows any young ladies who are in high school or college who'd like to participate in that, just shoot us an email. We've tried to get the word out. Um, we're having a soft launch of that tomorrow afternoon. And our three speakers are from uh, universities in Nova Scotia, uh, Orlando, Florida. And then we have a, a, a Carla, who is a supplier diversity person, Carla Tolls McKinney at um, Walt Disney World is going to be another presenter. So we have three presenters on that tomorrow afternoon. It'll be interesting for, um, uh, you know, all of us women business owners too, because we're gonna talk about how to follow your dream, but hopefully most of us are already doing that. <laughs> but it's for the young ladies to teach them how to follow their dreams and hopefully they can grow up and be um, corporate people and, and entrepreneurs like us. So pretty exciting. All right, with that, I wanna end our session. Any, any parting words, anybody? No? Okay, no. Good. Everyone, thank you, Diane. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies. Appreciate it. Thank you for thank being here, Chris and, and team. All right, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Take care.